Hello students, uh, we are discussing western political thinkers as you know that uh, optional is playing decisive role in your selection and thinkers is a static part and uh, once you have command then it will be working as a platform to reach out the other portions. So Plato we have already discussed, let me remind you Plato was uh, in uh, 5th, 4th century BC, Greek, ancient Greek city-state, he was belonging to Athens and Athens was got defeated from Spartans. Before him there was Socrates who was his guru who was executed by mob. So Plato had hate for democracy, Plato used uh, the deductive method and Plato was idealist and Plato talked about philosopher kings and ideal population was 5040 for Plato and Plato for uh, Plato education was the spiritual remedy of social all social evils. Plato talked about philosopher king, rule of wisdom, and communism of vice and property. His uh, theory of justice is based on uh, desert, what, what uh, one deserves one must get rather than merit. Merit is more based on present. So Plato, Plato we have discussed at uh, in today's class we will be discussing Aristotle. Aristotle who was a disciple of Plato. But Plato had academia where students were learning by reading, writing and attending the classes. While Aristotle was more focusing on learning through walking, observation, scientific methods, observation. So Plato was also of ancient Greek city-state. Although he was not belonging to Athens, but he came to Athens and after that he continued to stay there in Plato's academy. So he was Stagrita, was the uh, city-state of Aristotle. As you know, at that point of time, there were large number of city-states with limited population and limited geographical area. So Aristotle was the disciple of Plato and his guru's guru, Socrates was executed by mob. So he had also hate for democracy. But his hate for democracy bit diluted with the passage of time. As you know, wounds heal with the passage of time. So Plato's hate for democracy was far more than that of Aristotle. And first we see the introduction of Aristotle, the background, the text, the context, the time, the situation, the prevailing social situation at that point of time that was helping and shaping his thought. And then we will be going for his thoughts on justice, on citizenship, on slavery, on private property and his approach and his method and his ideal state and how is realist and all that, those things we will be discussing <clears throat> on revolution, on state, on politics, on rights and duties because political thinkers, as you know, politics begin with the state, ends at the state. This is the traditional definition of politics. So as far as Aristotle is concerned, he was also in ancient Greek city-state and he wrote the book Politics. So, he is called father of political science. Why he is called father of political science? Can you recall? Plato was called father of political philosophy. While Aristotle is called father of political science. You know, science. Why science? Because Aristotle was believing in scientific method. You can recall Plato's method was deductive, that is uh, general to particular, predetermined conclusion and then finding logic to prove that, top bottom approach. But Aristotle's approach is inductive method. As I always believe that uh, for clinical accuracy, you must recall the things uh, with uh, the mnemonics. So I'll be giving mnemonics at the last first. Inductive method, I for 
inductive method. This is scientific method in contrast to Plato's method. Inductive method means what? It is particular to general. Particular to general means Plato will see so many particular things and will find the pattern of uniformity and then arrive at the conclusion. Conclusion is not predetermined. This is a method based on observation. Science, as you know, is based on observation, repetition, experimentation, demonstration. So, Plato's uh, method was deductive, but Aristotle's method is inductive. It is based on observation. He believed in science. He believed in facts. He had love for the facts. So, his method is inductive. There is no predetermined conclusion. And what we will find that uh, in, uh, Aristotle's father was also biologist, physician. So there was impact on Aristotle's thought. So since his father was physician believing in medical science or doing uh, the work of physician, so it is based on science. It is based on observation, repetition, experimentation, demonstration, empiricism. So Plato is called father of political science because his uh, method are more based on the uh, his method is more based on the observation, repetition, and science rather than deductive approach. So we will move further. If we'll see that Aristotle is father of political science as well as father of comparative politics. Why Aristotle is called father of comparative politics? Because he classified and compared 158 constitution or forms of the government. 158. And uh, according to him, polity is the best and most practicable form of government because best is one which is practicable. So Plato was not willing to sacrifice good for the sake of best. If best is not achievable, then we must prefer the good. So father of comparative politics because he compared so many constitutions. First, I just giving the introduction of Aristotle, then we'll be going into the details that uh, uh, what was the context of Aristotle, you can see in 4th century BC, he was guru of Alexander, Alexander as you know, Alexander the Great, who tried to conquer the whole world. So Alexander had great respect for his guru, Aristotle, and he is father of comparative politics also, he is father of political science also, and for him, he is realist, his approach is realist. Plato was idealist, he was giving primacy to ideas. So Plato's thought was theory of ideas, while Aristotle's thought is based on theory of forms. For Plato, ideas were prior to matter and philosophy was greater than physics. But for Aristotle, matter is inherent in the matter is inherent in ideas means his uh, if you see Plato then he gave uh, for him in his scheme of things ideas were greater than that of matter but for Aristotle matter and ideas are of equal importance it's not that ideas are prior to the matter matter is in fact inherent in ideas. So Aristotle's approach is uh, more based on realism and his, uh, as I said, he is less talking about philosophy, ideas, ought to be, should be. He is more talking, he is more talking about is, what is, 
that science is also talking about what is rather than what ought to be what should be so many things many times philosophy talk about unachievable things that may be achieved in future so what we see that there is a difference in approach and aristotle's book's name is politics and his approach is more practical which was followed by alexander but since he was disciple of plato and plato was disciple of socrates so there was definitely impact of their thoughts on thoughts of aristotle as well like socrates said unexamined life is not worth living means critical examination questioning negation and then finding the conclusion means there can be so many possibilities and then you negate the things and then you narrow down and then you achieve at the conclusion that was socrates method so that kind of thing was followed partly by plato also partly by aristotle also aristotle also believes in knowledge learning uh, uh, wisdom education there is no doubt but his approach on these uh, on these things are more based on realism means more scientific method so in aristotle's introduction we have seen that 384 bc to 322 bc can you recall alexander attacked india in 326 bc so alexander was disciple of aristotle so this is his method that is inductive method scientific method realism rather than idealism or uh, this uh, rather than idealism he is following realist method now we see that uh, his thought can be divided into various uh, asp- uh, various uh, dep- uh, compartments but we will go one by one i hope you have understood the introduction of aristotle that is how he was have also having the hate for democracy how he followed the the inductive method how his methods are more based on this uh, realism scientific approach how is father of political science now we will discuss one by one aristotle on state first then aristotle on forms of government and constitution and then aristotle on slavery aristotle is functionalist also you know who is functionalist 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 believe that every component of society has a functional role in social stability be it family be it marriage be it private property be it ownership of slaves these are social institutions individual cannot survive without family his various needs are fulfilled by family but family alone is not sufficient so there is community there is society then there is a state so functionalist believe in functional utility or role of existing social institutions so aristotle favored family marriage private property slavery these are social institutions and these social institutions play decisive role in social stability if there is no family there is no marriage then there will be always confusion there will be always conflict can you recall his guru plato communism of wives and property for guardian class means for plato the pri- private property was symptom of selfishness it was symbolizing selfishness but for aristotle it was not they have functional utility and they helps in social stability family marriage private property slavery 
so aristotle is not believing in the uh, the believe, did not believe that there will be symptoms of selfishness unlike plato and his thoughts are more realistic private property family marriage these institutions are existing and continuing from the time immemorial and these are historically time tested so we have seen that how aristotle is functionalist so now we will go, go one by one that uh, what is his thought on uh, state because politics begin with the state and so that's it so regarding state aristotle is also organic thinker can you recall organic thinkers who believe that the individuals are organs while state is the body and organ cannot survive without body so it is as total statement that those who are not living within the state are either beast or god means human beings cannot survive without a state means individuals are organs and state is the body can you think of any organ surviving outside outside body similarly aristotle says those who are not living within the state are either beast or god not human beings because aristotle believes that man is a social and political animal man is a social and political animal why man is social animal can man exist without society without family without marriage without private property so man is social man not man cannot live a isolated um, uh, separated solitary life man is social animal because his various needs are fulfilled by various components of the society so he is social he has to be social if he is not social he is not man either beast or god and political animal this is very important political animal state this gives primacy to the state when we talk about political that means state will come directly or indirectly so man has created uh, this uh, these various social institutions and state is indispensable state has to be there so there is another statement of aristotle which proves that he is organic thinker that state came into existence for sake of life of man came into existence state we have to prove that he is organic thinker a state came into existence for sake of life of man sake of life of man and continues for sake of good life of man continues for sake of good life what does it mean can there be existence of any individual without a state it is never possible can there be existence of any organ outside the body if we cut the organ will have it it will have it uh, it will have no utility it will have no separate existence survival interest can we say hands interest is separate from the body's interest no the hands interest or organs interest is inherent in the interest of the body same is the case here individuals interest is inherent in the interest of the state so it's not that only that uh, state came into existence for sake of life of man it continues for good life of man now what is good life can you have a good life without your moral material personality development and state works as education institution this is the similarity between plato and aristotle similarity between plato and aristotle 
here aristotle also says that state works as an educational institution for moral material and personality development of man educational institution state works as educational institution for mmp m m p means moral material and personality development means there is positive role of state education institution education institution also promote morality it helps you to become moral opposite of selfish not self centric working for the society working for others it is based on goodwill morality moral development we have in ethics syllabus also ethics morality probity uprightness all these things are there so moral development is not possible because without education one will be self centric one will be animal type and material development without education can you have a skill which is serving the utility of society so will you be materially developed unless you get education for material development and your personality your verbal expression your non verbal expression your coherence your thought process your thinking process your compatibility with others this the, the personality your impressiveness can it be developed without education so education plato said is the spiritual remedy of social evils because all they were educationist bit socrates bit plato bit aristotle all the alexander was the uh, ruler and uh, alexander's father had aristotle for learning so ultimately state plays a positive interventionist role positive role you know first and foremost role of the state is to maintain law and order defense security but for aristotle for organic thinkers the state is representing perfect reasoning man's reasoning may be imperfect but state represents perfect reasoning and state represents highest order in hierarchy and it uh, serves higher purpose so it reflects per, uh, uh, perfect reasoning and it is the statement of aristotle that natural is best best is natural and state is natural natural is best not artificial natural is best he was opposing sophist sophist were a group of uh, educationist different from the category of socrates plato and aristotle sophist were saying that no no individual is prior to the state and uh, the state is created by social convention by the social contract and uh, uh, this uh, state is artificial but in contrast to sophist plato and aristotle believed that state is natural and natural is best best is natural why is natural is best best is natural first component is natural is best that whatever is natural whatever is pre existing whatever is existing right from the very beginning is of course the best we cannot create parallel to that so natural is best and best is natural of course and state is natural state is natural means unlike sophist sophist believe in uh, so, uh, um, social contract theory and they believe that the state is created by man and man is prior to the state and so but aristotle believe that no state is natural a state represents perfect reasoning a state does not represents simple will superior will a state is representing collectivity collectivity is always having higher wisdom than individual and collectivity has the perfect reasoning rather than individual reasoning and collectivity is having superior will so state has some higher ends to serve 
state is collectivity so has higher ends collective ends to serve and let me clarify that for organic thinkers there is no difference between society and state society and state there is no difference means our social obligation is equal to our political obligation although liberals capitalist will completely reject this notion and they will say that there should be minimal state and uh, best uh, the state best government is one which governs the least and least role of a state and limited political obligation but for plato and aristotle they are organic thinkers and they give primacy to the state and for them society and is equal to state that is social obligation is equal to political obligation whatever obligation duties that we perform towards our society must be performed towards state also because state is the body and in the well being of the body there is inherent interest of the organ now we move forward now you will find that uh, this uh, the Arist aristotle has talked about state his organic thinker his realist his method is inductive his method is scientific now we move forward state uh, as i said plato uh, aristotle is also father of comparative politics he compared classified 158 constitution or forms of government so is aristotle classification classification as you know polis means city state and state is always there state was there state will be there because there cannot be stateless society otherwise it will be unregulated society so when we talked about classification of forms of government or constitution because aristotle used them interchangeably constitution as you know is the supreme law that contains the powers functions of the members of the government their interrelationship with the individual civil society so constitution ensures rule of law and aristotle's thought is closely resembling to british dicey's rule of law so as far as forms of government is concerned if we see forms of government then aristotle classified these forms of government both on quantitative and qualitative basis if one person is ruling then this monarchy if few are ruling then is aristocracy if many are ruling then it is polity but normal form of government so if we go by these vertical things they are quantitative one person is ruling few are ruling many are ruling and this is qualitative normal means good law abiding working for general interest perverted means distorted bad working for vested interest not law abiding misuse of political power so if we see the normal form of government if one person is ruling then is monarchy according to aristotle if one person is ruling is monarchy if few are ruling then it is aristocracy and if many are ruling then is polity i am putting a star mark on that i'll say why i am putting a star mark here because aristotle said that polity was the best and most practicable form of government and you will be quite surprised that today we uh, go by democracy we vouch democracy we support democracy but here it is classified as perverted form of government democracy mobocracy 
सकती एज यू नो मॉब एग्जीक्यूटेड सोक्रेट्स सोक्रेट्स वॉज हैविंग द ऑप्शन टू स्किप फ्रॉम द प्रिजन बट ही रिफ्यूज ही सेड आई विल नॉट बी रिलेंटिंग फ्रॉम द ट्रुथ आई विल प्रेफर टू टेक पॉइजन एंड दिस रादर देन गिविंग अप द ट्रुथ सो इट वॉज मॉब विच एग्जीक्यूटेड हिज गुरुज गुरु सो प्रैक्टो अरिस्टोटल्स गुरुज गुरु वॉज सोक्रेट्स सो फॉर अरिस्टोटल इट वॉज परवर्टेड फॉर मॉ गवर्नमेंट ओली गैरकी डायनेस्टी रूल हियर ऑल्सो फ्यू आर रूलिंग बट दोज हु आर मेरिटोरियस बट हियर the rulers are owing their position to the blood origin the lineage the dynasty so oligarchy kulin tantra monarch then tyranny tyranny is the worst form of government one ruler cruel ruler insensitive ruler who is ruling by uh, just uh, you misusing power misusing power not only against political opponents as but also against people so in this classification what uh, aristotle said that polity is the best and most practicable form of government now we will see that why this will require further because i am just writing here polity according to aristotle polity since i have not erased it because we need to uh, this uh, uh, we need to just compare so polity is the best is the best this question has been asked so many times if you can see the question paper in the material that i have provided i hope this question has been asked so many times that uh, polity is the best and most practicable form of government in 1999 polity or constitutional government may be described generally is a fusion of oligarchy and democracy central to political thought of uh, uh, his classification of different types of political co- constitution in the politics evaluate 2014 you have the all material with you i have provided so this has been most popularly asked question polity is the best and most practicable form of government now one of the reason why polity is the best because it is most practicable as you can recall that aristotle was not ready to sacrifice the good for sake of the best it is best because it is most practicable we are not talking about idealistic unachievable uh, um, uh, the unrealistic things but whatever is achievable among them polity is the best and so polity is the best because one reason is that it has uh, uh, it is most practicable than others second polity is having admixture of liberty wealth and wisdom you see in democracy there is can be liberty but there is no acknowledgement of wealth and wisdom similarly in oligarchy there is acknowledgement of wealth but not wisdom and liberty tyranny there is no question of liberty monarchy one ruler may be good but again there is no acknowledgement of uh, this liberty but aristocracy social base of the government is quite narrow so in polity there is a happy admixture of liberty wealth and wisdom second reason why it is the best and most practicable form of government third reason why polity is best because here larger social basis social base 
in governance this is a very common sense that there is chances of committing mistake by group of people or many people is lesser than one person howsoever good he may be or she may be similarly chances of committing mistake by few people is more than chances of committing by many people but let me tell you here also too many people are ruling but here it is too many people are ruling here many people are ruling because in polity it's not that head is only counted and like democracy unlike, uh, unlike democracy means in democracy you see only heads are counted not wisdom within the head and only numbers game mediocre rule over the wise it is not so in polity polity is different from democracy one similarity is that it has a larger social base it is rule of many it is rule of too many here no acknowledgement of wisdom merit here acknowledgement of merit and wisdom and polity is the best because it is most practicable and polity fourthly polity is closest to ideal closest to ideal what is ideal according to according to uh, this uh, now i can erase because we are just discussing polity so if you find that uh, polity is the best and most practicable because it is closest closest to ideal now what is ideal ideal is golden mean ideal is oligarchy oligarchy plus democracy divided by 2 that is golden mean one time question has been also asked i just discussed that uh, in 19 let me yeah in 1999 the question number 15 you can see from the booklet that polity or constitutional government may be described generally as a fusion of oligarchy and democracy aristotle 1999 so fusion this is oligarchy individually is negative but this is also negative but if we find the average and uh, root out the weaknesses of these forms of government then it is golden mean so golden mean is an ideal state and for aristotle the golden mean the closest one to golden mean is the polity means other forms of government are far away from it and aristotle has also given theory of cycle of change of government aristotle also believe that power corrupts power holders no form of government is ever lasting there is no form of government or rulers who will be immortal because change is very much inevitable so, so there is cyclic change of government many people people anti incumbency you might have heard in recent election many people fed up with the rulers with the passage of time the, then they want to have some change so this is seen that uh, for, by remaining in power for so long the uh, the ruling class use trickery and uh, false method so aristotle believed in cycle of change of government or constitution which he called revolution although modern definition of revolution is radical change unprecedented change uh, uh, and uh, all comprehensive change but for aristotle use revolution in two sense one where rulers change constitution remains the same and another rulers remain the same uh, and constitution changes so Uh, the whether there is a change of rulers or whether there is change of form of government or constitution for aristotle it is cycle of change of government or form of constitution why because power corrupts power holders power corrupts if you remain in power for so long then the corruption is inevitable you will be quite surprised to know the fact that 
सोफिस्ट वेर मोटिवेटिंग यूथ टू ज्वाइन पॉलिटिक्स फॉर द कैरियर यूथ टू ज्वाइन पॉलिटिक्स फॉर द कैरियर एंड मेटेरियल डेवलपमेंट विच वॉज क्वाइट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम प्लेटो एंड एरिस्टोटल सो पावर करप्ट पावर होल्डर्स सो दैट विल लीड टू डिग्रेडेशन दैट विल लीड टू चेंज ऑफ फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट so there is cycle of change of government but why what we are discussing polity is the best and most practicable form of government why because polity has longer life than other forms of government polity although polity is also not immortal polity more durable more sustainable this is the difference in other forms of government there is change of form of government for example even if there is monarchy mono means one one ruler is good but one individual is always having limitations so plato favored monarchy philosopher king rule of wisdom but aristotle favored rule of law for plato no uh, law is mightier than knowledge but aristotle favored rule of law so in polity there is rule of law and law is based on reasoning not on passion law is more empirical factual so polity is more durable polity there is rule of law polity is closest to ideal polity is having happy admixture of liberty wealth and wisdom polity is most practicable here larger social base but unlike democracy here there is acknowledgement of merit so few people many are ruling but they are also ruling based on merit and aristotle talked about merit not desert merit merit is progressive your role at present society deserve means desert means your uh, earlier achievements it is regressive so plato talked about desert deserving people but aristotle talked about meritorious people if we talk about upsc what do you think upsc is guardian of desert or guardian of merit system of course it's merit system merit is the individual qualities which are socially having serving social utility at present in japan teachers utility is more than that of politicians and so merit may vary but whatever is serving social utility at present not based on past deeds so here there is acknowledgement of merit also it is closest to golden mean so polity is the best and most practicable form of government in polity the various social institutions are being maintained like family like marriage like slavery all these are maintained now we have seen aristotle as organic thinker we have seen aristotle and state we have classified forms of government we have seen cycle of change of government also that how there is cycle of change of government how power corrupts power holders now we move forward aristotle being functionalist he favored he was uh, favoring institution of family marriage he was personally having very good experience of happy married life so he such supported family marriage unlike his guru plato and he also supported institution of private property being functionalist being functionalist aristotle supported private property now various grounds he has given to support the institution of private property aristotle i can uh, you can recall aristotle is functionalist functionalist means functionalist are those who believe in functional role of various social institution for social stability so why he supported private property what are the grounds for supporting private property reason number 
we are discussing Aristotle. Aristotle is functionalist. So first reason that it is the ownership of private property which promotes certain good qualities like generosity. Who will have generosity? One who is having private property or lacking? Charity. Who will go for charity and donations? Those who are having nothing, they will not be able to contribute to the society. Then generosity, charity, flexibility, who can have more leverage? Hospitality, who can uh, hospitality, who can uh, honor his guests more? One who is having private property or lacking it, of course, one who is having private property. So these good qualities are due to ownership of private property. This is the reason number one, why Aristotle favored private property. Reason number two, it is the institution of private property which are historically time tested. There are so many upheavals historically time tested. There are so many upheavals in the society, in the history, so many changes. But private property as an institution has survived. Even in Indian history, you will see private property as an institution survived. In the Vedic period, there was ownership of cows. In later Vedic period, there was ownership of land. Subsequently, coins, wealth, real estate, other property, precious elements. Historically time-tested. It has This institution has certain inherent strength because of which it has survived for thousands of years as an institution and till this date and in f future to come also this will continue. Those countries, socialist countries who were against institution of private property got disintegrated like Soviet Union, Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Romania, Bulgaria. So historically time tested. Private property is in tune with the basic human instinct. Basic human instinct. This is the third reason. Instinct. No. Every human being wants certain thing in his own sphere, not to be shared with others. There are certain things that you don't want to share with others. Like, will you uh, like to share your hand handkerchief or towel with others? Never. So, it is basic human instinct. Every human being has a psyche, has a thinking that there should be some space for him only, exclusive space for him only, that is not to be shared with others. So in tune with the basic human instinct. Reason number four, why private property and those even in times of uh, disaster, those people who lack private property always suffer. But private property, those who have private property, it serves as a cushion for them, for bad times. So it is in tune with the basic human instinct, it is historically time tested and it is the institution of private property which uh, those who have private property pay taxes and have more civic sense. Have you seen, seen taxpayers destroying public property? Hardly. Most of the destroyers of public property in agitation or movement are those who are not paying taxes. Because they don't have a stake. They don't have contribution in public property. So civic sense is more with those who are having private property taxpayers. Who is taxpayers? One who is having private property. So more civic sense. So this promotes civic sense. Civic sense is uh, indispensable for a living, for, uh, in a living where one can live uh, without so in uh, civic sense now fifthly if we see civic sense now it is private property ownership of private property which helps in developing managerial capacity if you have private property, you will have to manage it. Once you manage it, you have experience. 
you have many inputs you learn how to manage it how to manage it those who have no private property have nothing to manage no managerial quality so if the managerial quality is developed then that can be utilized for the sake of a state in future those who have never managed any property how they will be managing uh, and uh, when they will be given greater responsibility so who who should be given greater responsibility one who has managed the institutions or companies or private property so this is also the reason sixth private property helps in getting citizenship we'll discuss after this who will become citizen as total is very much niggard in giving conferring citizenship so ownership of private property helps because leaser who will have leaser leaser means those who have no material worries those who can concentrate on political issues public issues those who are out of kitchen so helps in becoming citizen let me that aristotle did not believe every human being as citizen or every resident as citizen we'll see that how citizenship was given to limited number of people so if you have private property you will be having leaser you can away you will be away from material worries you can concentrate on public issues you can concentrate on political issues and this helps in becoming citizen then it is the institution of private property which promotes good qualities in human beings that uh, i have already discussed and it is the institution of private property which helps in go state or government to have more taxes to perform various functions besides maintaining law and order security defense it is the institution of private property which is in tune with the basic human instinct historically time tested it has civic sense managerial quality uh, it uh, 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 it helps in so in all uh, sense we see that he aristotle fully supported private property he fully supported marriage institution of family all these are from the, the, all these are uh, his thought on function as functionalist now now we'll see that uh, he also supported slavery aristotle supported the institution of slavery for aristotle slaves were not proper human beings they were only living tools so in society there are master who is like soul who is having wisdom and courage who is master who is having wisdom and courage is master and slaves who are slaves slaves this master is like less like soul it is believed that our existence is based on two things soul which is unmanifested part of the body and body is manifested part of the soul they are one and same they are attached but soul is more important it is immortal and slaves are just like body slaves are not proper human beings unlike master they are just living tools they are not citizens as well slaves are having one who is having appetite they lack reasoning they are dependent on master for their livelihood they don't have mental faculty they don't have mental virtue to have productive work so aristotle supported slavery although you will find that after american civil war slavery was ended in the whole world 
in technical sense but today also we have servants which is vestige of slavery although not slavery slavery strictly speaking where slave has no free will has no choice were forced to work against his or her will which is not technically now but the vestige of that is even continuing now if you will find that why aristotle supported slavery slaves th three grounds he supported slavery on three grounds first slavery is natural second slavery is useful and third slavery is expedient so how slavery is natural according to aristotle nature has not endowed every person with the same mental virtue nature has itself endowed only few people with the mental virtue or mental capacity intelligence thinking courage wisdom most of the people are doing the repetitive work without applying their brain wisdom so it is very much natural nature has not distributed mental faculties equally so it is very much natural as aristotle's love for the nature can you recall natural is best best is natural state is natural so he is always believing in natural things and so slavery is natural because nature has itself not indeed endowed everyone with mental faculties so some people are master and most of the people are slaves second it is useful it is useful for master either slavery then master would be relieved from the menial work and he can concentrate on political work he can concentrate on public affairs and both plato and aristotle believes that that those who are performing political function should not have material worries or should not perform an economic function and those who are performing economic function should not be doing any political function if traders become the king or rulers and rulers start doing trade what will happen this will lead to corruption uh, even cornwallis in india tried to bifurcate it and all the time it was done it is they seen that so master would be relieved from the menial work like washing cloths like cooking food like all those things so he can concentrate on political things for larger public issue where it requires wisdom and it is useful for master and it is useful for slaves also how slaves cannot earn their livelihood in by working independently without working in conjugation with the mind of the master if they are not able to perform productive work their manual work will be in vain that will be of no use that will be unproductive so if they do unproductive work how they will sustain their livelihood they cannot but there is another aspect also derivative excellence by slaves by working in conjugation with in company with master will also learn gradually compounder works with doctor after 20 years he also is having knowledge equivalent to doctor means like doctor same is the case deriving excellence by working slaves one they cannot earn livelihood independently without application of master's mind second they derive excellence so it is useful both way it is useful for them it is useful for them serving but both parts complementary and it is expedient it is good that most of the people are slaves if everybody is having mental faculty everybody is will start arguing everybody will start questioning there will be argument debate discussion indecisiveness social fabric will collapse so it is good that social stability is possible only because society is run by minority elites those who are having wisdom they guide society otherwise the crowd itself the mob itself cannot guide itself it is said for the crowd that they are just like ship so 
it is good that most of the people are doing their work without application application of the mind and uh, this this is how they continue so how they continue so aristotle supported slavery on these three grounds it is natural it is useful for both it is expedient as if there is no slavery there will be collapse of social fabric there will be argument counter argument indecisiveness debate discussion no work will be possible again i repeat aristotle is functionalist who supported the institution of family marriage private property slavery he is functionalist his guru did not favor family marriage and private property now we move forward if we see forward then uh, i talked about citizenship that uh, aristotle was very much niggard in conferring citizenship first of all you must learn what is citizenship then we will see aristotle's concept of citizenship citizenship involves full and equal membership to a political community with corresponding rights and duties it is a political concept all residents are not citizens citizens have political allegiance exclusive allegiance towards the state so that is citizenship but as far as aristotle's concept of citizenship aristotle gave citizenship to very limited number of people a whole chapter on citizenship was there in his book politics but first he start by elimination negation that they cannot be citizen they may be citizen and lastly he will reveal that who will be citizen so those who perform their uh, who uh, perform manual work to earn their livelihood they cannot be citizens aristotle divided society into six classes first agricultural slaves agricultural slaves second artisans and craftsmen they perform their manual work they earn their livelihood by their own manual work they cannot be citizen third soldiers fourth priest fifth counselors members of then magistrate for ensuring justice so they cannot be citizen why they cannot be citizen most of the non greeks were hired for agricultural slavery and artisans and craftsmen they were earning their livelihood by their own manual labor so those who earn their livelihood by manual labor they cannot be citizen citizen must be free from material worries he should have leisure leisure class rule he should concentrate on political issues so they cannot be citizens because because they earn livelihood by doing manual work they cannot be citizen now they may be citizen but not necessarily there are so many conditions maybe there are so many conditions now we move forward aristotle also says those who are mentally inferior physically inferior they also cannot be citizen so women surprisingly father of political science is gender biased women cannot be citizen because according to aristotle they were mentally and physically inferior although feminists disagree with this notion that women are not the uh, other gender but uh, they have equal mental capability and not not less than men but aristotle excluded women old age people they are also 
they cannot be citizen children they cannot be citizen they also lack mental and physical capability non greeks because he was racial biased also he believed that greeks were only having mental capability women children old age people disabled people also cannot be citizen although aristotle was not cruel they can remain as a resident for plato and the time and the time of communism of wives and property those disfigured and mentally retarded children would be killed at the time of birth because they will be liability on the state but this is not the case with the they will not be citizen because they are mentally and physically inferior now so large section of the society has been excluded from citizenship bit peasants bit uh, non greeks bit women bit children bit old age people bit disabled now who may become citizen may become citizen who is first descendant of citizen means whose mother father are citizen so they may become citizen but not necessarily even today we have citizenship by birth in most of the countries in america presidential election can be fought only by those who are citizen by birth not by descent or naturalization or likes so citizens those who have decision of citizen those who have house own house on own land those who have their own house in the own land they can be citizen third those who have legal right to appear as witness see in ancient period be it india or greece everybody's testimony was not accepted like in india shudra's testimony was not accepted in judicial process brahmins testimony was accepted same as other case here so those who had legal right to appear as witness to appear as witness they could become citizen but not necessarily those who had ownership ownership of private property and slavery slaves ownership of private property pp and slaves they could be citizen so they may become citizen but not necessarily means all soldiers should not be citizen all uh, this all those people who were priests were not citizens they may become citizen but who would be ultimately citizen this uh, uh, this will be revealed ultimately by aristotle and the last that those who are associated with the exercise of state sovereignty they will only be citizen means aristotle so much niggard so much narrow in conferring citizenship you know so much niggard in conferring citizenship so those who are associated with exercise of state sovereignty means those who are members of the government members of the government only would be the citizens from this you can see that how much is total means all categories a huge population majority of population is excluded from citizenship even all priests all soldiers will not be citizen so these are the conditions to become citizen and can you recall that uh, for becoming citizen you must have slaves you must have ownership of private property then only you will be away from material worries then only you can concentrate on political process then only you can have larger thinking process then only you will be citizen so this is also aristotle's thought on 
citizenship. Now, we move forward. We have seen Aristotle as realist, Aristotle method, inductive method, Aristotle method, inductive method, Aristotle's introductory part. We have seen how Aristotle divided society into six classes, how Aristotle favored leisure class rule, how he divided forms of government, how he supported slavery, how he supported private property. Now, his uh, thought on revolution. In cycle of change of government, I talked about revolution. Aristotle talked in two terms. One where rulers change, but form of government or constitution remains the same. Constitution. remains the same. For example, if there is monarchy and one monarch is replaced by another monarch, then this is a revolution where only rulers are being, ruler is changed. But form of the government remains the same. Second, form of government, form of government or constitution changes but rulers remain the same. But rulers remain the same. This is also revolution. So Aristotle used revolution in two sense. And as far as causes of revolution, Aristotle gave two causes, broad causes. First broad cause first broad cause is general and second particular although from exam point of view uh, this has been asked less but for understanding Plat Aristotle and referring is uh, all the questions which has been asked it is very essential so what is the general cause there is only one general cause lack of proportional equality lack of what is proportional equality one is numerical equality that is treating equals equally and unequals unequally so lack of proportional equality because people are always envy or jealous of undue privileges. If one is having merit, then nobody will question. Sachin Tandulkar is given Bharat Ratna, will not, nobody will question. But those who are lacking merit is given Bharat Ratna, nobody will accept. So undue privileges are never accepted by any society. So the distribution should be based on needs, ability and capacity. As both Plato and Aristotle believed in proportional justice, treating equals equally, unequals unequally. Different individuals are different in need. Somebody is more needy, so require more. Somebody is more able, so need to be incentivized more. So distribution should be as per needs, ability and capacity. But ability for Plato was desert, one who is deserving. For Aristotle, it is ability is merit. So lack of proportional equality if political offices are given to unmeritorious people, non-meritorious people, then it will cause revolution. As far as uh, particular causes are concerned, there are so many causes which are very much common. Misuse of power by power holders, exposure of corruption, then fall method of uh, grabbing power, non-fulfillment of basic needs, we have so many examples in so many parts of the world. In every time we see these reasons are particular causes of revolution when there is anti-establishment or anti-incumbency or people are uh, always disgusted with the rulers. So there are so many particular so, so there are so many particular causes of uh, uh, so many particular causes of revolution first 
misuse of power second fall method of fall method for grabbing power these are quite familiar third non fulfillment of basic needs if people don't get bread and butter they will be blaming it for the, uh, it to the to to the government non fulfillment of basic needs then corruption nepotism corruption nepotism then exposure of misdeeds of people exposure of misdeeds of rulers misdeeds sometimes neglect rulers neglect minor things and downplay that this is my very minor thing can you recall french revolution the louis 16th queen when people approach queen that we are starving then she said okay take bread omelet means the rulers were so much cut off from the society they were so much uh, means not knowing the needs of the society that people got disgruntled and got for so neglect of some minor issue which may have wider ramification or they will have greater repercussions so neglect of minor changes sometimes rulers downplay but in people's perception it is not minor issue it is major issue and then they go against the government so there are so many particular causes of revolution where people rulers are changed or form of government is changed this is what revolution in aristotle's scheme of things we have seen in modern times so many revolutions glorious revolution 1688 industrial revolution in england 1750 onwards <coughs> american war of independence or american revolution 1776 French Revolution 1789, then Bolshevik Revolution 1917. So many revolutions we have seen in history. Revolution is not mutiny, not ordinary change, not revolt, not only change of guard, but radical change or comprehensive change. So Aristotle's thought is more practically applied. Be it his uh, uh, thought on private property, marriage, revolution, justice. justice is one issue which is all the time debated in all the times and it will be unending debate uh, amat sen also talk about justice rolls theory of justice even earlier theory of justice in medieval time i i for i retributive justice based on revenge was there but now we are discussing aristotle's thought on justice justice has the root word jus means bond bond which gives the members of the society together <coughs> so justice uh, as i have discussed plato's justice how plato's justice is not only relational and external but intrinsic as well and we have seen uh, plato uh, gave uh, uh, the justice primacy to over love love is narrowly confined to relations justice is doing good with all just ruler is just like doctor that was plato and plato also favored proportional justice that everybody would contribute according to his ability and will get according to his needs ability and capacity aristotle also favored proportional justice treating equals equally and unequals unequally means everybody would contribute according to his ability and would get according to needs ability and capacity but in contrast to plato aristotle's ability is defined in terms of ability in terms of merit not desert so on this account aristotle also uh, favoring proportional justice more needy get should get more more able should get more 
why more needy should get more because you will not be able to survive without support of the state why ab more able should get more because more meritorious more able will have incentive to contribute for tribute for the society that will lead to social progress and in aristotle's institution of private property one of the ground on which he supported private property was incentive that private property is a kind of incentive for individual to work hard to contribute more to excel more and in that he also get more for himself and contribute more for the society now as far as justice is concerned aristotle has classified justice into two parts complete justice which is ideal situation but as you know aristotle is more talking on real terms realistic terms and second is particular justice first we see the complete justice complete justice is an ideal situation it is only possible in ideal state golden mean everybody is moral everybody is patriotic body moral everybody is patriotic everybody is law abiding moral perfection so that is complete justice everybody is have getting education everybody body is meritorious everybody is law abiding this is an ideal notion so aristotle is talking less about this this is not realistic situation this ought to be but we are focusing more on particular justice because aristotle divided particular justice into two parts distributive justice distribution of what distribution of resources wealth political offices public goods how there should be distribution that again as per the needs ability and capacity nak ability and capacity the distribution should be as per needs ability and capacity that is distributive justice and second is corrective justice if something wrong happens then some corrective measures should be taken the wrong doer should be punished and the the those who have lost they must be gaining so in corrective justice there are further divisions voluntary exchanges there are so many examples of voluntary exchanges like sale like purchase buying deed signing voluntary exchanges in voluntary exchanges like loot robbery loss of honor so here it is distributive justice and aristotle is more particular on distribution of political offices post of position of trust and responsibility if they are distributed as per the ability then will good good the need well and good capacity well and good but again lack of proportional equality lack of proportional distribution if less able get more if no those who are not needy get more people will not accept and that will lead to revolution so lack of proportional equality lack of proportional distribution equality will be reason for uh, this uh, revolution so this is distributive justice in india also the justice that we follow in preamble is social economic political but by and large our justice system is more based on distribution of public goods public goods means those things which are limited in availability and more in demand so claims are conflicting claims be it political offices be it resources be it wealth be it income be it opportunity they are limited so how to distribute it if it is distributed based on these principles then it will lead to distributive justice corrective justice 
where something wrong happens in these exchanges then offender or guilty must get punishment and victim must get what relief or compensation sometimes the victims get relief proportion to their loss and offender must get punishment in proportion to their offense should not be in disproportion for breaking the wire traffic law one cannot be hanged for civil offense there cannot be harsh punishment for criminal offense there is harsh punishment so the point is that there are professional judges to see what is the scale of loss what is the scale of compensation given what is the scale of amount of offense then only offender is punished and victim is given compensation or relief this is what corrective justice is there so corrective measures to be taken by the state judiciary the wing of the state is interested professional judges are interested with this task to calculate what is the proportion of offense what is the proportion of loss what should be the compensation what should relief it is not based on re revenge it's not retributive in medieval time there was retributive justice that uh, equal amount of loss was or damage was inflicted to the offender which is not the case here so this is how aristotle defined justice so his justice is also being principles are being followed at present world today you might have seen the voices we want justice the offender must be hanged the victim must be given more compensation the more needy should get more below poverty line the more able people should be incentivized all these voices of justice you might have heard so aristotle's concept of justice this is and uh, uh, he is also believing that this justice is not possible uh, complete justice is not possible but as he always said that i will not be able, i will not sacrifice good for the sake of best because best may not be achievable but whatever low hanging fruits are there whatever is achievable we must do it first step by step then we can achieve near by to the best now i will revisit aristotle's ideal state although aristotle is realist but aristotle also gives what is ideal state as per the as per him ideal state golden mean for a total that is golden means means oligarchy plus democracy divided by 2 is golden mean so what is the population of the ideal state what is the geographical extent of the ideal state what are the classifications so this is summing up of aristotle's thought first population of ideal state for aristotle is 10000 can you recall plato for plato aristotle uh, population of the ideal state was 5040 second it should be city state third means neither large nor small or the although large and small are relative terms if we compare it with today's nation state they are nothing there means uh, there hardly any city state like singapore like vatican city and likes so ideal state for uh, aristotle is city state because he was living in that period of time pre christian greek city state then near to sea near to sea so that uh, it will not be dependent upon neighboring state to engage with the rest of the world fourth economically self sufficient economically if it is too small then it will be lacking resources economically self sufficient then temperate climate neither too hot nor too cold temperate climate because aristotle was favoring the middle path he was not following extreme path so temperate climate Uh, means neither too hot nor too cold 
then in ideal state six classes as i have mentioned agricultural slaves artisans and craftsmen then priests sol soldiers then priests then counselors magistrate then his then his ideal state will have the institution of private property and slavery slavery in his ideal state there will be institution of private property and slavery then in ideal state works as st educational institution positive role Edu for mmp for moral material and personality development moral material and personality development of man then <laughs> his ideal state is one where justice is maintained based on justice based on desert or merit merit based on merit so ideal state according to aristotle also works as education institution for moral material development ideal state where justice is maintained whether six classes are there there is this population this geographically neither to uh, so much um, large or not so small because large if it is too large then it will be difficult to manage if it is too small then it will be lacking resources so the ideal state these are the features of ideal state and in ideal state there will be middle class out number rich and poor to get taken together rich are arrogant poor are slavish and submissive rich know how to rule but they don't know how to be ruled poor are slavish and submissive they know how to be ruled but they don't know how to rule middle class is more realistic situation wise he can rule situation wise he can be ruled so this moderation middle path as i have talked about so society where middle class is larger is always progressive we see in most of the western world revolutions were led by middle class bit uh, industrial revolution bit uh, american revolution bit french revolution bit uh, glorious revolution 1688 all the russian bolshevik revolution was led by lower class but most of the revolutions were led by middle class so middle class know how to rule and how to be ruled and moreover leisure class rule those who have leisure must rule because those who are away from material worries those who are away from material worries those who are away from kitchen they will be ruling better they will be concentrating on political issues better so all these are the features of ideal state as per the aristotle means you can sum it up in ideal state uh, all thoughts of aristotle in his ideal state you can further add a limited number of people given citizenship in his ideal state justice is maintained in his ideal state private property slavery marriage are maintained ideal state is functionalist stability social stability ideal state uh, which one which is uh, natural natural is best best is natural state having perfect reasoning superior will organic state theory all these are aristotle's thought so i hope i have uh, concluded all the topics of uh, aristotle citizenship and moreover uh, we will go for uh, the comparison also now <coughs> i would like to give a mnemonics because after so many studies you go to exam hall and on the d day you are not able to recall the things with clinical speed and accuracy it is all going in vain so always equip yourself with certain techniques picturize contextualization there must but mnemonics based techniques frameworking classification correlation smart techniques are very much needed so i just write spelling aristotle and i will derive his thought whatever we have studied from this aris so first <coughs> against this is just mnemonics a for 
Aristotle against communism of wives and property. Can you recall Plato favored communism of wives and property for guardian class, they will live in common barracks, they will work for the state and they are symptoms of selfishness but for Aristotle, he is against communism of wives and property unlike Plato. Then rational human being, rational human being, human being is rational but reasoning of the state is perfect human beings rationality may be imperfect so human being is rational so it is different from other animals because uh, other animals are uh, maybe social but they are not political but man is social and political animal i for inductive method or ideal state both you can say i square inductive method is based on observation particular to general ideal state also you can say just I have discussed what is ideal state, golden mean for. Then S, slavery supported. Slavery supported. He supported the institution of slavery. You can recall that how slavery is naturally useful and expedient. T for theory of revolution. I have discussed that two kinds of revolution the two causes of revolution, general cause and particular cause. Over oligarchy plus democracy divided by two is golden mean. This method I will be using repeatedly to ensure that you can recall the things with clinical accuracy. Right. Then theory of cycle of change of government. No form of government is ever lasting or mortal. Cycle. Theory of cycle of change of government then lizard class rule lizard class rule means those who are away from material worries those who have private property those who have ownership of slaves they will be able to concentrate on political issues and e extremities to be avoided aristotle is called madhyam margi or following middle path middle class rule middle class must outnumber rich and poor taken together extremities to be avoided middle path path of moderation path of moderation he followed so from the spelling of aristotle itself you can derive the things from theory of cycle of change of government you can add on the proportional justice lack of proportional justice also leads to change and particular causes I have discussed so many causes lizard class rule you can add this uh, private property and Aristotle is functionalist so from the spelling of Aristotle itself you can derive his thoughts so it will be quite handy I have developed so many techniques in my 19 years of teaching the, these techniques will be quite handy for the students to recall the things with clinical accuracy because one uh, all things are important your uh, memory techniques your concepts your ideas your answer writing skill after uh, marks I will be also taking class on answer writing skill because ultimately that will be holding the key that how you have to write the answer what is the tag word of the question what is the locus focus boundaries what to write what not to write how to write how to start how to end all these are part and parcel because ultimately PSIR is for main now and answer writing will be holding the key so knowledge will not only be sufficient understanding and thinking will also not be self-sufficient but knowledge plus understanding thinking visualization concept building and answer writing skill the admixture of all will lead to success so you can uh, easily see the things from Aristotle uh, now I will discuss questions which has been asked by UPSC now you'll be able to easily answer the question <coughs> You see, the 
the if you see the question number uh, i have given the booklet in that first to seven is question on plateau on plateau then it is uh, plateau's comparison with marks ninth is again plateau then 10th question which has been asked in 2017 10th question which has been asked in 2017 everywhere inequality is a cause of revolution everywhere inequality is a cause of revolution cause of revolution this question has been asked this uh, statement give of aristotle this question has been asked in your upsc exam in 2017 how will write this now you are comfortably placed this is question number in my booklet it has been given 10 question so how will write this answer you have already studied it is very easy to write now lack of proportional equality is the cause of revolution and what is proportional equality that treating equals equally and equals and equally so distribution everybody should contribute according to his ability and get as per the needs ability and capacity and the difference between plateau and aristotle that ability for aristotle is merit merit is socially serving social utility merit is forward looking progressive not desert not based on your past deeds but your work at present your contribution at present your excellence at present which promotes social cause so if there is lack of proportional equality there will be revolution revolution means change of rulers or change of form of government revolution recipe of revolution is based on disgruntlement of the people people don't digest undue privileges so not needy people are getting more or more less able people are getting more people will go for revolution very easy to write then next question is Uh, that has been asked in 2015 uh, 11th question aristotle's concept of equality again this was asked in 2017 uh, aristotle's concept of equality has been asked so again the same aristotle's concept of equality is based on proportional equality that proportional equality means treating equals equally and unequals and equally those things are same so aristotle's concept of equality they are very simple questions comment and in comment you have to be critical also you have to write your own opinion also when you write comment normally it is of 200 words and first you have to elaborate the statement given then you have to be critical on that statement and you have to give your own views that uh, this question uh, this uh, is partly true but the there is other side of the coin also that sometimes there are other causes of revolution as it is not only general cause there are certain particular causes of revolution also even if need, the distribution is as per needs and ability and capacity but if there is corruption if there is unscrupulous means to get political power then also it will lead to revolution so this is limitation of this statement so in 200 words first paragraph you have to elaborate on this what aristotle said then you have to give your own views and other side of the coin also then 2015 uh, 11th 12th question is in past in 1998 polity is the best and most practical form of government aristotle very simple polity is best because it is most practical polity is best having a larger social base polity is best because happy a mixture of liberty wealth and wisdom polity is best because it is closest to ideal polity is best because it has six classes polity is best because where justice system is mentioned polity is best because where private property slavery is maintained polity is best because lizard class rule so all those things you have studied already very easy to answer these questions just i am uh, reminding 13th question that has been asked in 1996 upsc slavery is natural and beneficial for both the master and slave aristotle you have already we have already discussed that slaves are just like soul master as slaves as slave, uh, master are just like soul having 
wisdom and courage slaves are just like body and having appetite and natural and useful you have to uh, write these two aspect natural and beneficial beneficial or useful so how slavery is natural because nature has not endowed with everyone with equal mental virtue so most of the people are lacking mental virtue so most of the people are working as slaves few people are working as master it is natural nature has not distributed it equally and how it is useful because it is useful for master master will be getting rid from the manual work slaves will be getting livelihood slaves will be deriving excellence very easy to write i have already discussed rule of law is better than rule of men this has been asked in 1995 so uh, this is in criticism with plato plato said rule of man rule of philosopher king rule of one ruler monarchy aristotle favored polity as the most practicable form of government and for plato no law was mightier than uh, no no, uh, no law was mightier than knowledge but for aristotle is more realistic he favored rule of law he favored constitutionalism he favored uh, his uh, political system which is closest to aristotle's thought is britain where rule of law dicey's principle is followed so uh, rule law is without passion law is based on reasoning law is based on collective interest law is based on collective rationality so state and law because according to aristotle one more statement that you must be knowing that man is the worst animal without state law and justice see if there is no state no law then man can do those evil things which animal can not even think man can be so much cruel but man is so civilized so much regulated so much disciplined because he is having oh, this law and justice so uh, this question also you can easily do most in slavery rule of law is better than rule of man where more predictability is there then 1999 question has been asked polity or constitutional government may be described generally as fusion of oligarchy and democracy i have talked about o plus d or golden mean that uh, the ideal form of government polity is closest and all features of the ideal state i have already discussed so it will be very easy for you to write then 16th question in was asked in 2014 central to political aristotle's political thought is classification of the different types of the political constitution in the politics evaluate here evaluation means you have to give both merit and demerit so first of all you have to give the classification 158 constitution or form of government then qualitative basis quantitative basis one is ruling few are ruling many are ruling i have already discussed that is central to his thought because aristotle is organic thinker he is focusing on state naturally he will be focusing on forms of government he will be classifying it he will be comparing it this is the reason why he is father of politi comparative politics as well he is father of constitutionalism as well he is father of political science as well he has studied the state in detail has given uh, the classification and he was fond of classification you must know that aristotle is also father of biology he classified uh, the different species and different living beings and he is classified different forms of government and constitution as well then 16th question which has been asked in 2014 upsc uh, uh, that central to our, polit our political thought is is classification of different types of government 17th question the police exist by nature and that is prior to the individual aristotle 2002 it has been asked in 2002 that uh, police means city state and state is prior to man and state is natural state is not product of convention or contract among the individuals state is pre existing in fact sophist claim that individual were prior to the state aristotle and plato said no they are organic thinkers that organs cannot exist without the body same man is social and political animal those who are not living within the state are either beast or god now man is social and political animal so all these questions you can easily write that police exist by nature and that is prior to the individual so here you have to find the keyword police means state then nature nature best is natural natural is best and state is natural organic thinker means 
state is prior to the individual individuals are constituents of the state not maker of it organs are constitu organs are constituent of the body not maker of it so individuals are not maker of the state sophists believe that but right, this is aristotle you have not to study sophists uh, plato and aristotle in fact refuted sophist group of thinkers 2006 18th question Arist attempt uh, attempt a critic of aristotle's ideas of slavery here you have to give the concept of slavery given by aristotle that how it is natural useful and expedient but critic you have to criticize that slavery as an institution is not maintained being right now it is being legally abolished slave trade was abolished it was prevailing in first quarter of 19th century but thanks to Abraham Lincoln and American war uh, civil war ultimately negroids who were used as slaves were done away with so criticism you have to do that is it how it is in human how aristotle treated slaves not as a human being but as a, only as a living tool so this criticism but criticism will be second part first part you have to explain what is aristotle's thought on slavery because this is not a question of slavery in general this is a question of 90 um, 9, 2006 attempt a critic of aristotle's ideas on slavery then 1994 the authority of masters that of states men is different from one another the authority of the masters that is that of statesmen is different from one another so masters are those who are maybe in civic sphere also they may have ownership of slaves statesmen are citizens so all masters may not be citizens ownership of slaves may help in becoming citizen but not necessarily so you have to distinguish between citizens who are exercising state sovereignty and that of those who are holding uh, those who are having ownership of slaves then compare plato's idealism with respect to aristotle's realism you can easily compare plato is idealist aristotle is realist plato used deductive method you aristotle used inductive method then uh, uh, plato is talking more about what to be, ought to be plato uh, aristotle is talking about what is and uh, uh, pl the plato is giving primacy to ideas and philosophy over physics and matter but aristotle says no ideas are inherent in the matter physics is as much important as the philosophy is there is no question of giving superiority to one over the other plato's theory is theory of ideas ideas are eternal and existentialism means essence uh, essence or ideas are more important but aristotle says no whatever we observe around is more, uh, uh, more important uh, if they are not illusion they are not only shadow of ideas so there are so many differences between idealism and realism of plato and aristotle like uh, uh, plato's thought on communism is also idealistic and utopian while aristotle is more practical aristotle following middle path plato is father of political philosophy aristotle is father of political science so science is more based on observation repetition experimentation explain aristotle's critique of plato's idealism again 2019 it has been asked last year that uh, idealism and realism that uh, how plato is idealist and aristotle is realist this debate will be always there in every chapter of political science but there is no absolute or general generalization you have to specify in what sense one is ideal because no one is 100% idealist or 100% realist we can say gandhi is idealist in comparison to marx in terms of achieving ram raj but again marx is also idealist in achieving communist society but in terms of method the um, the marxian method is more realist more based on materialism rather than spiritualism so this is always there idealism realism so you can easily compare you have already studied both plato and aristotle i hope you will be able to do all the question even if you write a answer and uh, even if there are the queries i will be available to uh, address your queries as well because because of covid 19 this is the best mode of learning you can repeat and uh, 
repeatedly see the things and you can ask and you can write and I will be giving a special class on answer writing skill as well. Today uh, we have finished the uh, our uh, fixed agenda topic. So thank you. Bye.